Hey! Alright. So, on to my crazy intro, as I always do. All of you must follow. And maybe donate. If you don't, I will release my frozen SCP-610 specimen onto the world. Hope you enjoy the channel. <laughs> I, I I have no words. <laughs> I have no words. As as you can tell, I've been constantly doing crazy intros and outros that make no sense. It's all good. I mean, you're. I'm not gonna let you release six ten. Um, <laughs> that's 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 the that that that's where I draw the line. <laughs> You releasing the 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 impossible to kill lizard. Uh, no, it's Fletch set eight. It's I always get that one mixed up with because uh, it's <laughs> it's six eight two, it's six ten. I always get yeah. I always get those two mixed up for some reason. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna let you release the flesh to hates into the world hey, either. Or if you think about it, to get rid of one pandemic, you need another. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> not even. <laughs> That doesn't even work. Right. <laughs> right, we are living through two pandemics at the same fucking time. Right. Maybe if we create a, a, a another virus, that virus will fight the virus and become an antivirus. No, yeah. this, this is not that... this is not com this is not a comic book. Isn't, this is not a isn't comic that book. How a lot of, isn't that how a lot of uh like zombie viruses start as like an antivirus to a virus? There are some, some like that. Some of them start as like, like a vaccine or some sort of like medical procedure gone wrong. Other ones are like some sort of satellite did it. Um, it depends on like the, the, it depends on like the function of the virus. Like I know in 28 days later, that's kind of, um, it's, it's like, it's an infection. Those aren't even really zombies. So it's it's more of an infection than anything. Same thing with like Resident Evil. It's a lot of like infection, infectious shit. Um, oh, but yeah. my, most like, like like the living uh, like in in The Walking Dead, uh, it's a virus that just permeates all of Earth and that infects every single person. So like you could like either you can either get bit and die from the sepsis. Or you can just die and not get your head destroyed and then come back anyway. I, I um, still find 610 is the most terrifying illness. is because it, it constantly evolves. Like it's gotten to the point yeah, where... Yeah, that's it's horrifying. It, it's gotten to the point where it became so sentient that it made a church and worshipping. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that is terrifying. Like yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> um, it's the not last thing I watched... Because even, like, you know, like, stuff like The Last of Us with the cordyceps yeah. infection, mm -hmm. um, that's that's different, too. But I just got through watching... Um, I don't know if y'all watch Primal. Uh, again, Tartakovsky's Primal. He's the same guy who made, like, Samurai Jack and uh, he directed uh, Dexter's Laboratory isn't that, and shit. Yeah. Isn't that the one with the dinosaur? The yes, dinosaur the and dinosaur the caveman, and the yeah. caveman. And it's beautiful. It's fucking amazing. It's like something written by Robert E. Howard. It's like literal Conan shit. Um, there's no dialogue in it either. There's only one episode with like English speaking dialogue, and it's got Chuck E. D. in it. <laughs> like literally, it's got Charles Darwin talking about the descent of man and a bunch of him and his like scholarly buddies have to fight this like psychopath who's like raging through the like halls of this mansion and shit. It's really cool. But yeah, no, uh, in that series, um, one of the episodes is literally just a giant Argentinosaurus gets infected with the rage virus. Yeah. And it's fucking terrifying. And they, they can't fight it. They have no choice but to run. It, it's, like it's it's fuck it's madness. So I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to watch this show at some point. Like right. I'm gonna have to like load that show up, and I'm gonna have to watch it on here with you guys at some point. Yeah, because it's amazing. It is fucking amazing. Yeah, talking, no talking. Sorry. Oh yeah. No, you're fine. You're, also, fine. you're fine. Also, Joe, before you say anything, uh, there's actually uh, 
one thing that's also more terrifying with the 610, they've technically mm -hmm. slightly evolved again. Because they started picking up, like, farming equipment and using them as weapons. Thanks, I don't the want The Irish? To... <laughs> they have invented Irish people? Shut the oh, fuck God. up, Scottish you people. piece of shit. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you <laughs> son of a bitch. Right, actually Irish. I'm also I Irish. You. What, you are? Wait, what the fuck? Yes. My my grandmother's maiden name is like no, 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 incredibly no, no, fucking no, no. Irish. I, no, I no, I I I heard that. I was bright. What did you say? Oh, I was saying I'll I'll end dragon. Oh, <laughs> I, was like, I thought you. I thought I, I thought I heard something else. I was like, uh, no. I thought I heard. I thought I heard I something else. I was like, oh god, I what the want, fuck? No, Momo, no. Okay. Changing, okay. changing the topic because oh. I don't want to fucking know. Uh, okay, Ooh. so on Netflix, there they made a Resident Evil show. Mm -hmm. The plot is kind of iffy, but the acting isn't that bad. But then again, I can't really say anything because I unironically like a lot of Marvel movies. But the fucking the actresses are I love them. They are so good. But everyone like shit on the show because like, oh, why are there so many black people? Why is it's like ah. Yeah, well, I don't even, I don't even, I haven't watched, I haven't watched it yet, so I'll have to, like, see, From like, what? if they it's, also like, oh. yeah. From what I've seen, I, it's way like a better valid than movies. Thing. Oh. Yeah, it is, it's far, it's so much is, but they cancel it because, like, fucking racists were, like, rage, uh, reviewing it, so they fucking canceled it, and it 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 ends on a fucking cliffhanger, and I'm so upset because yeah, I want to know what happened. But no, a lot of a lot of <sighs> series like that on Netflix have ended on cliffhangers. Daybreak ended so on a cliffhanger. Uh, I want to know what happened. Shit ended on cliffhangers. Because like you genuinely, you get like a you genuinely, like they did the editing for some of the scenes are, is kind of whack, but like. You yeah. genuinely start to care about the characters because of the fact of like they keep going to the past, to the future, and stuff like that, or like the present. Like you genuinely start to care. Also, I want I want to post some of the actresses. Like they're so fucking cool. Also, two of I'm them have are to villains. Watch it. Um... I fucking I I love villainous women so much. Also, the okay, so there's kid actors or like guess teen actors, and then there's adult actors, and like the actors look, like 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 they look pretty close to each other, and it's like holy shit, that's actually that's well done. Oh yeah. Like there's issues with the plot, like they changed like a fuck ton of shit from the Resident Evil games to like the show, no, which that's, makes that's, sense. That's, like why I'll the fuck would you want a carbon copy? Well, no, I mean, like, not, not. I don't even know if it's necessarily a carbon coffee, but we're like, like, what what most people want is like a respect to the source material, like, yeah, especially when it comes to like The Witcher and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Like even The Witcher, like you know, it's not it's not exactly like the um, games or even the books, but it is um, it does respect the source material in a way. Like with regards to like Yaskir and um, you know a lot of the interpretations of like the elves and a lot of stuff like that. So I I, I kind of I kind of see where people come are coming from on that. And if it no, probably doesn't respect the 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 fan material, I the, the the source material, then I might have my issues. <laughs> so. Yeah, like it it's kind of iffy. I can understand like people's criticisms of not like following the source material a lot. But like it, I don't know. It's it's a fun show on its own, you know. Also, I sent in no voice what the actresses look like. Holy shit! So... I love women. Holy fuck. Anyway, uh, should don't, we start the story? <laughs> yeah, let's let's start the story. Um, Mike, does also, Mike sound everything? Yeah, everything, everything sound good on your end. Yeah, I hear everything you're saying. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, this is it, folks. Uh, this, this is a long form creepypasta, so uh, it, it may take like more than one uh, like actual like session of this. I'm fine with, but um, yeah, no, this was uh, written years ago, um, 
and I do mean years ago. This was this is written like all like like a while ago. Um, it's one of the it, it, uh, NES Godzilla is one of the classic quintessential kind of uh, creepy pastas. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's written by uh, Cosby Daff, um, and it's very image heavy. So we won't. I don't know if we'll have the luxury of like showing you that today. But I know that uh, once this hits the actual um, YouTube page on Dr. Bright's web, uh, Dr. Bright's YouTube channel, mm-hmm. um, it can be you know broken down that way. So, and you can go to uh, Blog Bogleach, the Bogleach forums to read the original story there. But I'm reading it off of the Creepypasta fandom right now. If you want to follow along, so this is. NES Godzilla, Chapter 1, Earth and Mars. When I was a little kid, the two things I loved most in life were Godzilla and NES games. So naturally, when Godzilla Monster of Monsters came out, it was like a dream come true. Well, almost. To sum it up, most of the game revolved around getting through very repetitive outer space levels while smashing up tanks and jets, then fighting against and then fighting against Godzilla's monster enemies. Overall it was pretty mediocre, but back then I didn't care. But when I got the game as a present for my tenth birthday, I played it night and day as much as I could. Unfortunately, I traded the game for Amagon a year later. Much to my regret when I found out what that game was like. Recently, I bought a new NES system and through a lot of hunting and asking around, my friend Billy managed to find a copy of Godzilla Monster of Monsters. I was pumped to play my favorite childhood game. It never occurred to me to ask where Billy found it. He also gave me some other games like Legend of Zelda, Bomberman, and some stupid thing called Action 52, but Godzilla had to come first. So I started the game, and the nostalgia came flooding back like a tidal wave. Godzilla's 8-bit theme song flooded proudly through the speakers. And I was soon grinning like an idiot. (laughs) Some people laugh at me playing such outdated games, but I've never had as much enjoyment for any games other than those on the NES. Those 8-bit games take me back to when things were much simpler, more, more safe. But after what's happened with this game, I don't have those feelings anymore. I'd forgotten how quick the fun of smashing things as Godzilla wore off in the scrolling levels. The game bombards you with bullets and things crashing into you from every direction, and you're too big to avoid most of them. Although my excitement had worn down some, it wasn't long at all before I got to my first boss battle. My first opponent was Gizera, an obscure squid kaiju who had never been in a Godzilla movie. The most annoying thing about fighting Gizera is that he always backs you into a corner and starts smacking you with his tentacle. And you're unable to move until he gets off you. The move doesn't do any damage, but it can stall you until the timer runs out and you have to start the fight over. And he regains some health. And he regains some health. It is annoying as it sounds. Uh, And of course, he did it when I fought him. Only for some reason, this caused the game to glitch up. Because once he started smacking me around, he never stopped. The timer was supposed to end the fight about in about 40 seconds, but this lasted nearly five minutes. After a while, the graphics started to mess up with little red blocks all over the place. Which was 
weird, but I just took the game out, blew on it, and started it again. I wasn't about to let this little glitch, let a little glitch stand in my way. So I started again, and this time defeated Gizera and the level's other boss monster, Mogera, without any pro pro problems. So then it was on to the next planet, Mars. I browsed around the board and found something unexpected. Where Varan's piece should have been, there was instead a piece representing Titanosaurus. There were only 10 kaiju in the game, and Titanosaurus was not one of them. Or so I thought. Perhaps Titanosaurus was originally intended to be in the game, but was swapped out with Varan for some reason? So I began to feel very excited. Not only was I playing my favorite game, but I was playing a prototype of some sort of with prototype of some sort with a new monster. Uh, needless to say, I ran through the levels as fast as I could to see Titanosaurus in action. Fought Geezer again and beat him before he could do his tentacle smack. But this time, the glitch started happening when he died. Gizra's sprite didn't sink to the bottom, but instead seemed to be devoured by the glitch. And his eye started randomly spawning all over the screen. I know now that these glitches with Gizra were my first warning sign that something was very wrong with this game. But foolishly, I ignored it and proceeded to on to fight Mogera, which this time had a glitch of his own. Mogero was twice the size he should have been, which startled me. He was considerably harder to beat than usual, which is to say not at all. But as soon as I defeated him, when he died, yet another glitch happened. This happened extremely fast, so I was lucky to get a scream cap from it, of it all. But what happened was that the giant Mogera spray started to shatter and melt. Also, if you... If you look at the garbled text in the right corner of the screen, you'll notice what appears to be a bird in a cage. I, I still have no idea what that meant. At this point, I was about to fight Titanosaurus, and I was worried as to what glitches would happen this time. But to my surprise, Titanosaurus looked just fine. Although all the game's bipedal monsters were the same height, Titanosaurus was a bit taller. But since Titanosaurus was actually taller than Godzilla in the film in his film debut, I thought it was actually kind of cool. After a very fun night with a monster that wasn't supposed to be in the game, I took over the enemy base and proceeded not to Jupiter like normal, but instead to Pathos. And that's the end of chapter one. Chapter 2. Pathos. Pathos was the same as Jupiter in layout. Except the board was dark blue rather than green. The first thing I noticed was that all of the usual level icons had been replaced by a blue rock and some kind of orange honeycomb shape. There was one icon that had a part of the jungle icon shape but I didn't pay much thought to it. I checked the other side of the board to see the new monster. Instead of Hedera, it was Bioanti. But that couldn't have been right. Godzilla vs. Bioanti didn't come out until 1989, and this game was made in 1988. Perhaps Bi Toho put Bioanti in the game to build excitement for the movie next year, but change their minds? I tried to rationalize the game's abnormalities any way I could. But this would prove to be futile. Pathos's map song was the first new song I heard in the game. Like most of the new songs, it was hard to describe, but in any case, I'll try. It, it started out slow and suspenseful much slower than any song in the game. But every 12 seconds or so, 
there would be a loud clashing sound, and the tempo changed. It was like the composer randomly started playing parts from five different songs with the same instruments. I moved Godzilla over to one of the many blue rocks that had been replaced, that had replaced the jungle icons and started the level. The level resembled a blue mountain range with a blood red planet in the sky, but, but there was something odd about the mountains. They had a shredded paper look to them. I thought at first maybe the glitch had affected it, but it looked far too intentional. I quickly noticed something else about this new level. There were, there were no enemies. At all. Not even any obstacles. I should also mention that this was where the point meter started to become glitched beyond comprehension. But it didn't bother me much. I never keep up with the game points. So without having to focus on anything, I listened to the music while walking through the level unopposed. The music had a sorrowful feel to it. It would have been rather pleasant had I heard it in a normal game. The level went on for three screens, but with no obstacles I around, I finished it very quickly. I tried other levels of the same type to see if any of any enemies would appear, but there were none. There was little else to be seen in the Blue Mountains, so I tried the other te level type. I started with oh, I, I started one of the orange levels, and my eyes were assaulted with a grotesque background of tumorous orange eyes. The sky was the same as the ground, and I assumed the game was indicating that this level takes place in a cave. The only enemies here were Matango spawn, but as you can see, the little bastards were everywhere. The music certainly didn't help with a mixture of screeching sounds and loud drum beats that sounded like a monster's theme in a horror film. After completing it, I tried to avoid playing through any more of these levels whenever I could. The map was short, so it was only a few minutes before I headed out towards a rematch with Gizra and Mogera. But this time, their sprites and attack patterns were vastly different. I fought Mogera first. Mogera's replacement was a flying machine with slight resemblance to a, a Pascagoula alien. It was a bit like fighting Mothra, only it moved with a lot more grace. It attacked by spinning its te front tentacle like a corkscrew, and it still had an eye beam, except now it fired from the drill. This lanky aberration that re had replaced Gizera, and the new beast was even more of a challenge. It would run and jump at a fast pace, constantly swinging its arms, making it hard to get close, and of course it tried to pin me into the corner with as much annoying resolve as ever. I defeated it using a combination of tails, whips, and heat beam spamming. I defeated them and then was going on to fight Titanosaurus. But when I started the fight, Titanosaurus was nowhere to be seen. And the game simply went back to the map with the Titanosaurus piece now missing. There was no one left to fight now but Bioanti, so I eagerly started the battle. I was quite surprised that Bioanti started the fight in her rose form. She was immobile and used tentacles to keep me away from her main body, which took the most damage. As expected, she turned into her final form after taking enough damage. The sprite looked pretty damn good for 8-bit. The battle technique was the same, except now Bioanti can move, albeit slower than any other monster. 
being hit by the tentacles did more damage now, and Bioanti could do an acid spit, which I managed to avoid by jumping in the, in the screen cap. Not much more difficult to beat than Titanosaurus. It only took two rounds, but when Bioanti was gone, the music had stopped. And there was a new icon replacing the base. The icon wasn't there before I beat Bioanti. It resembled a red tribal mask. And I had the feeling of dread when I saw it. But since it replaced the base, it must have been the only way to exit Pathos. I moved Godzilla to the square and started the level. It was a hellish looking place with no sky and a flickering fire in the background. The fire looked more, far more advanced than anything I'd seen on the NES. There was music in the form of a slow, steady drum sound r resembling a heartbeat. All the texts on the top of the screen and the life bar were gone. In their place was a single bit of text in the middle of the screen that said, run. My, my feeling of dread had intensified. I cautiously walked through the level, but like the Blue Mountains, there were no enemies. I paced around for a minute thinking, run. Run from what? The first time it hit me, I didn't even see it. I heard a noise outside my room. It turned back if something fell. And when I looked back, Godzilla was dying. I figured it must have just been a glitch. I wasn't going to play through the game without Godzilla, so I, I restarted the game and went to the password screen. H have I mentioned how creepy the password screen music is? If, if, if you played the game, you know what I mean. It, it doesn't at all fit with the mood of the game. It's, it's more like something from a horror movie. Maybe, it, maybe, they, maybe they made it like that, so... Kids wouldn't cheat, but I was annoyed at this point <laughs> because I because I thought I was going to have to fight all the monsters again, but that didn't happen. The game started me off right where I was before. I saw I started the red face level, but so I tried it again, making sure to pay attention this time. That's when I heard a low bellowing sound. And then, and then I saw it. This, this, this thing. Do, do you know that feeling? your body has when you uh when you feel like you're in extreme danger you start to recoil and tense up and as the adrenaline flows through your veins and and your nerves start to feel very cold that's the feeling i had when i took the screen cap i have seen all of the godzilla movies but I'm pretty damn sure this was never in any of them. It had to be something the creators made up. But what kind of sick fuck would put this in a children's game? By sheer dumb luck or, or perhaps the adrenaline boost, 
I managed to run fast enough to get away from it. It ran very fast. So much so that if you saw it, you would almost think you were certainly going to die. And when I say die, I mean your monster gets killed instantly if that creature touches you, it touches them. Once I had gone back to the map, I was afraid that I, I was extremely tempted to shut off this game. I was so afraid I was extremely tempted to shut off this game and try to pretend this never happened. I, I, I couldn't believe what I had seen. It, it couldn't have been real. And, and even if I wanted to continue, I still had to get Mothra through the chase level, but as I stayed inactive on the map screen for a few minutes, my gear was replaced by, by burning curiosity. What in the hell just happened? What was the rest of this game like? I, I only had to beat this level with Mothra and then it was on to the next world. But when I moved Mothra to the red face, the game registered me it as me beating the level. I was quite relieved. I, I tried to prepare myself for the next world. Trance. Chapter 3. Trance. I was still pretty shook up from the last level when I started Trance. Trance's map music did nothing to ease the tension. As for how to describe it, um... Have you ever heard the theme from Videodrome? That's the that's the closest thing I can think of to compare it to. I checked to see who the new monster was. And it was Orga. A monster who didn't even make it in the film debut until 2000. Appearing in a game made in 1988. So much for my theories about Titanosaurus and Bioanti. There was no way this game was made in 1988. Those guys in Toho may have been smart, but I'm sure they couldn't see that far into the future. If they could, they would have never given Ronald Emmerich the rights to make a Godzilla movie. No, this, this had to be a hack of some kind. Which is... Which just opens up even more questions. Who, who made this hack? When? How? And, and most importantly, why? The why was the question that bothered me the most. My immediate assumption was to think that Billy did this to pull a joke on me. But that couldn't be right either. Billy didn't know how to make a ROM hack. And if he did, he'd probably just do something simple and stupid like replace all the monsters with crudely drawn genitalia. Unless Billy had amazing game editing skills and a serious dark streak to his imagination that he never told me about, he couldn't have made this. Is it even possible to put a hacked ROM into a cartridge? Aside from that, my eyes were drawn to a new icon on the map. A question mark. I was really curious, curious as to what it did. I'm sure you're also curious, so I'll explain the quiz levels now, since this was when they started appearing. There was one of these per map on here, from here on, and they always appeared near the start of the map. When you start on a quiz level, you appear on a screen like this. As you can see, there's a 
question at the top, a yes, no, but a yes and no button, and an emoticon at the center. I refer to this emoticon as face, real creative, I know. And for convenience, I'll refer to face as the one asking questions. The music for the quiz levels was a track actually in the game. It's the one that plays when you try to use the Ghidorah cheat and get sent to an unplayable level. Face asks you 12 yes or no questions. And you move your monster to the buttons for your answer. When you answer, the question disappears and Face changes his expression for about eight seconds, and then he goes back to neutral, and a new question comes up. There was no time limit, nor any right or wrong answers. Face had no respect for the player's personal boundaries and will sometimes ask deeply disturbing personal questions. For example, do you like hurting people? Have you ever killed or raped anyone? Have you ever been molested by a family member? Other times he would ask questions that were either mind-numbingly stupid. Is the sun hot? Is water wet? Or just flat-out ridiculous. Does your dog like the president? And maybe once per quiz... Face would ask you a question like that about the ask you a question about the game. With one exception, faces expressions change change expression changes seem to have no effect on the game, except for indicating what the creator thought of your answer. His reactions rarely made sense, and at first I thought they were randomly generated. The questions never followed a pattern. Face never stayed on the same subject for more than two questions. Early on, there were questions that made me think Face was building up to something, only then it asked some stupid garbage. Here are the expressions of Face that I saw while playing. I'll separate them into two categories. The expressions I understood and then the expressions I didn't. First are the expressions I understood. Number one, neutral, his default position. Expression. Number two, angry. If you try to attack face, his expression changes to this, but nothing else happens. Number three, sad. Number four, happy. Number five, sick. Number six, maniacal. F Face made this expression when he was being an asshole. You'll see what I mean later. Number seven, surprised. Number eight, love. Number nine, annoyed. Number ten, confused. Number 11, guilty or hurt. And here are the others. Two of these only appeared once, number one, numbers one and 12. And I suspected they might have been in jokes from the creator. Their respective questions were, do you like ice cream and are you a tough guy? As for the questions on the first quiz, luckily I had a notepad and pen handy. I have problems remembering things, so I often carry one around just to dot, jot things down, and sometimes I doodle in it when I'm bored. So when the first quiz started, I thought I'd record what happened. I'm glad I did. Here are the first series of questions, my answers, and faces reactions. Quiz 1. 1. Do you like this game? Answer, yes. 
reaction happy. Are you afraid? Well, question two, are you afraid? Answer yes. Reaction surprised. Question three, are you over 18? Answer yes. Reaction weird face five. Do birds have teeth? Answer no. Reaction love. Is peanut butter good? Answer no. Or question five, is peanut butter good? Answer no. Reaction sick. Question six, does the moon rotate? Answer yes. Reaction weird face number 11. Question seven, have you had a job? Answer yes. Reaction confused. Question eight. Do you like hurting people? Answer no. Reaction annoyed. Question nine. Is the sun hot? Answer yes. Reaction sad. Do you like dogs? Question 10. Do you like dogs? Answer, yes. Reaction, happy. Question 11. Is the president good? Answer, yes. Reaction, weird face three. Num question 12. Does your dog like the president? Answer, no. Reaction, angry. Now that I've explained all of that, time for the gameplay. After the quiz level, I tried the new green temple icon first. Wow. Maybe this was why the game was so weird. One of the developers was clearly drugged out of his mind. <laughs> Jokes aside, I am I was quite impressed by the graphics of this level, as disorienting as they were. But I hate those creepy, blank staring statue faces. The music had a hypnotic Indian techno vibe to it. There were two new enemies in this level. A flying ghost type thing with a trunk and a bat with a horse skull for a face. I appear at random, but I was lucky enough to get a screen cap of both of them. Then I proceeded to a blue mountain level, expecting another nice, calm stroll. I took my time walking, though, as I was completely taken by surprise when this happened. Not Magera came speeding towards me and took off quite a bit of health with his tentacle screws. It, it only took me, it, it took me two minutes. It only took me two mi minutes to kill him without having to worry about a time limit. But the boss monsters never show up in the scrolling levels in the normal game, I was worried as to what other rules this game would break. After another Blue Mountain stage, it was time to fight not, not Varan, whose replacement was one of the most bizarre creatures in the game. This strange creature attacks you by kicking and also opening its chest and firing heat-seeking missiles. Yeah, I, st I still don't get it. Um, the missiles were sometimes a pain to deal with, but I found out you can tail whip them out of the way. Not Varan is probably the easiest of the monster replacements. That cannot be said. The same cannot be said for Not Hedera. 
Apparently the source of the horse bats, not Hidoro was the most aggravatingly difficult monster to fight yet. Mostly because of his special ability. He could shriek and summon a small swarm of those horse bat things. I know there's only two in the screen cap, but every time he did this, about ten would arrive. The AI took advantage of the distraction and attacked twice as fast while the horse bats were flying around. Once that annoyance was over with, uh, I went through the Green Temple level to kill some enemies to restore my health. Interestingly, none of the horse bats showed up after Nahidaru was killed. And that was when I got an idea. If killing all the monsters made the red face show up, what would happen if I had avoid fighting Orga and go straight to the base? So I gave that a try. The game told me that there was no monster there when I tried to start the base level. And immediately afterward, the game took control of my Godzilla piece and moved it in front of Orca. My little trick didn't work, so... I tried to prepare myself for another chase, but first, I had to beat Orga. The fight with Orga confirmed another thing. Whoever created this game hack was clearly a Godzilla fan, not only because they picked a monster like Orga, but because they actually implemented something that happened in Godzilla 2000 in a really neat way. Uh, Orga's primary attacks were a punch and a heat beam from his shoulder cavity. But once you but once you had got him down to half his health, he did something new. He would expand his jaws and try to swallow Godzilla in the process, stealing your health and energy. But in doing so, he gave himself a new weakness. Firing a heat beam into his mouth would take a devastating four bars off his life meter. With that weakness revealed, I soon beat Orga. And despite how much I had hoped otherwise, the red face appeared on the map where the base was and the music stopped. I readied myself as best I could. I started the level and seeing that it was basically the same as the first, I didn't waste a millisecond before I started hauling ass I soon encountered obstacles in the form of the ground tile suspended in the air. Most of them you could jump over or destroy. Others you had to crouch under. About 40 seconds into it, I heard this horrible bellowing roar and saw that spider beast following close behind me. Stacks of obstacles barely slowed it down. It would back up and then charge its way through them, smashing them to bits. And when the smaller obstacles got in the way, it would expand his jaws and swallow them whole. I was afraid, but fast thinking and faster button pressing, but with fast thinking and faster button pressing, I escaped him yet again. I felt really excited, and so I laughed and said, Not this time, asshole. I decided to take a screen cap to celebrate. But when I said that sentence, just before the level ended, the monster did something that made my blood run cold it looked at me
that wave of mortal terror overtook me again. And I sure as hell wasn't laughing anymore. I took another screen cap of the next title. Right before I rushed, I rushed to the bathroom with splashing water on my face. And I take a piss that I nearly failed to contain when that fucking thing looked at me. Chapter 4. Dementia. When I got back to the game, I was getting very upset and confused. I thought about the way the monster looked at me. This game, the game couldn't have heard what I said. That's impossible. It had to be a random occurrence, but why did it happen precisely at the moment I insulted the monster? Nothing about this game made any sense. The new Godzilla monsters, the weird replacement monsters, out of the place imagery like the green temples, quiz levels, and the red monster chases, it, it didn't seem to add up in any meaningful way. If it was a prank, it wasn't funny in any way that I could understand, and they clearly put far too much effort in it, into it. If, if they were trying to make a genuine sequel with new Godzilla monsters, then, then why did they add everything else? Maybe it was some kind of art experiment, some group project made by a bunch of really talented and crazy people and they somehow lost the cartridge somehow. Or maybe they intended for some random person to find it. Hmm. It, it was all just fruitless guessing. As far as I could tell, there was only one way to figure out what the deal was with this game. To play it through to the end. Maybe, just maybe, there was something... There would be something in those credits, an explanation by the creators as to why they made this, or it could be something much more cryptic or strange, maybe even something horrifying. Before I got a good look at the dimension, Dementia board, I considered replaying Trance to see if the red monster would look at me again, but I decided against it. I wanted to keep moving forward. I was also somewhat worried that backtracking might cause the game to become even more strange. The dementia board music sounded a lot like the Saturn music, except it was slowed down and played with a piano sounding instrument. Like most of these new maps, it had a dangerous, sus suspenseful feel. Um, while listening to the music, I looked at the dementia board. There were four new boss, mo boss monsters this time. Or there were four boss monsters this time. Space Godzilla, Manda... Gaigan and Baragon. I was surprised that there were two new Toho monsters this time, but the best surprise was still to come. I started the quiz level. Here's another list of results in the same format as the last one. Quiz 2.
Question 1. Can you swim? Answer. Yes. Reaction. Happy. Question 2. Do you like fish? Answer. Yes. Reaction. Sick. Question 3. Can plant penguins fly? Answer. No. Reaction. Sad. Question 4. Can it spin in all directions? There was no clarification of what face meant by it, so I just guessed. Answer, no. Reaction, surprised. Question five, do you breathe oxygen? Answer, yes. Reaction, weird face number eight. Question six. Does it taste good when you bite a woman? I don't know who came up with this question, but I really hope they're getting mental help. Answer, no. Reaction, annoyed. Is it question seven? Is it night where you are? Answer, yes. Reaction, weird face number six. Question eight. Do you like cats? Answer, yes. Reaction, confused. Question nine. Is water wet? Answer, yes. Reaction, angry. Question ten. Have you ever broken a bone? Answer, no. Reaction, happy. Question 11. Do you like your job? Answer, yes. Reaction, hurt. Question 12. Would you like a new monster? Answer, yes. Reaction, weird face 11. I wasn't entirely sure at the time what face meant by new monster, but I couldn't resist answering yes, just to see what would happen. The result was mind-blowing. The game took me back to the board, and I had a new playable monster in the form of Angiris. Ever since I was a kid, I, I always wanted to play Angiris, since he was my second favorite Godzilla monster, and plus I never liked Mothra all that much. I moved my new Anguirus piece over to the left right next to it, eager to test out my new monster. Before I get into the level description, I'll talk about Anguirus a bit. Usually, using the up and down buttons, you could choose whether Anguirus stood in a bipedal stance or, in a cr or crawled on all fours. It wasn't a huge difference, but being able to stand was helpful in boss fights, and crawling sometimes helped dodge obstacles and attacks. He could punch and kick like Godzilla, but no tail whip. Instead, he had something far more interesting. The ability to curl in up into a spiked ball of death and roll forward. You could still take damage, but it was lessened. It was a good way of clearing out stage enemies, but unfortunately, doing this also drained the power bar. But the spike ball wasn't his only special ability. When you press start, he would fire a beam of energy from his mouth. It resembled Titanosaurus's sonar attack. And if this were a hack, it may have been inspired by the roar attack from Atari's Godzilla fighting game uh, series. Also of note is that when playing Godzilla, the level meter glitched up. Uh, judging by the life and power bar, I'd say he's on level 10. Now on to the level. As you might have guessed from the level icon, these levels are green palette swaps of the ground and background titles from the Blue Mountains. 
But what immediately caught my attention was the water, which had a transparency effect. Was was that even possible for an NES game? I know the Super Nintendo could do it, but I had never seen a transparency effect in a game on the NES. The Green Mountain music was played with the same instrument as the Blue Mountains, but the melody was totally different. It was a very simple song with a lot of abrupt pauses, followed by a loud noise, a loud note every few seconds. Anyway, I went through the usual strolling through the level. And again, there were no monsters or anything. But pretty soon, I had reached a cliff above the water. There was nowhere to go but into the water, so down I went. The water transparency made things a bit harder to see. But it's tolerable. After going underwater, I encountered two new enemies. A giant piranha and some kind of spiky bottom feeder thing. I liked the piranha because it, I could easily tell what it was. It was the same enemy design that would appear in a real game. Um, and there were very few enemies like this. They didn't take much hits to kill, but they were quite annoying and considerably trim down and would cons considerably trim down your life if you let, if they got close enough. They also tend to travel in packs. As for the bottom feeders, they're easy to deal with. They swim along the bottom of the screen towards you and are easily crushed with the roll attack or jumped over. In the screen cap, you can see me about to run one of them over, and there's a pack of piranhas behind it. After I beat that level, I moved Godzilla onto the blue castle icon. I started did the level, and I got a title screen with the text, Unforgiving Cold. The level itself looked like a castle dungeon made of blue bricks, with rows of identical white statue faces on the walls. These statue faces had a prominent look of horror on their faces. There was also some gray, flickering gray static, which didn't really obscure my vision, but it adds to the very unsettling mood of these levels. The music was 12 second loop, of a low-pitched choir vocalizing. That sounded very familiar to me. Whenever I played through one of these levels, I got this, this sudden, horrible feeling of anxiety. And the feeling that the farther I progressed through the level, the Closer, I was getting to something unspeakably evil. There weren't any enemies, but there was. These were some of the longest levels in the game. I only played one level, but it took seven minutes to complete. I didn't want to admit it to myself at the time, but I realized something playing the Blue Castle level. This game. This game has the power to make the player feel certain things. And I don't mean in the sense that you get irritated crap playing a crappy game or get unnerved by something scary in a game. What I mean is that certain events in this game can instantly make you start feeling something. I know that sounds completely insane. I, I don't blame you for not believing me. I wouldn't believe any of this either if I didn't play the game myself, but this is something 
very, there is something very, very wrong with this game, and I still don't know how to explain it. But then it was time to fight Baragon's replacement. Although Baragon was originally the smallest monster in the game, his replacement was the largest. It was so tall, in fact, that the ground was noticeably lowered and not Baragon's head was still barely avoided collision with the bar at the top of the screen. And it was frighteningly bizarre as he was huge. You may be wondering how he attacks without arms. Well, he has the most powerful kick in the game, but his other fighting technique is much stranger. First, he blasts a cloudy breath of pixels at you, which cause you to freeze. Then he walks back to the right corner of the screen and extends a huge Gatling gun from his abdomen. Th this might seem amusing to you, but it certainly wasn't to me when I was playing the game. This attack is almost as annoying as Gagan saw, and not Baragon could have been unbeatable if he consistently used that. Thankfully, he only did it twice while fighting him. Once you unfreeze, you can run up and start take, damaging the gun, which does extra damage to him. This helped me to destroy him. And then it was time to play the third level. And I decided that I was going to use Anguirus and fight Manda and Gagan and fight Space Godzilla with Godzilla. It was only fitting. Before getting into the battles, I'd, I'll describe a third level type. The Arctic. The Arctic is exactly what you'd guess from the name. An icy tundra with few watery segments. The music reminded me a bit of Northern Hemispheres from Donkey Kong Country in 8-bit form. A very dangerous sounding song. It made me think of being trapped in the tundra and freezing to death. There were two new enemies in this stage. The first was a creature, frozen, and a block of ice. They block your way, and so you have to use your heat beam to thaw them out of the ice. They look a bit like a smaller version of not Giza Road, only without the eye. When freed, they do a strange calling movement and push you backwards. It doesn't cause any damage, but it is a bit annoying. After dealing with the ice man, I kept walking for a minute or two and came upon a water segment. I jumped in and after, and this time I managed to get a screen cap of how the water splashes when you jump in it. Don't know how they program that, but it's pretty impressive. Another interesting thing is how the screen changes focus when you go underwater. Here, you can see the other new enemy, a little thing I like to call Spike Walker. They walk towards you and explode randomly or instantly if you attack them, sending spikes in every direction. These spikes don't do that much damage, but they did get me dangerously close to falling in a pit a few times. Oh, speaking of the pits down in the water, the game has a platformer element, bottomless pits. There weren't any of these in the original game, and it was strictly, since it was strictly an action game game, but the pits were a neat addition. After getting back on land, I encountered a very unexpected mini-boss. 
Maguma, the walrus kaiju. I know this game has some obscure monsters to begin with, but wow. Not that I'm complaining. It's pretty cool to... It's a pretty cool camo you owe from an underappreciated kaiju. Maguma's fighting tactics were very simple. He had a freeze beam, and he could charge at you. Not very mm, challenging, but certainly more entertaining than the Matango mini boss in the original game. One really interesting thing is that m about Maguma is that he doesn't die when you defeat him. He turns tail and retreats. This was the first time I'd ever seen it. An enemy monster change direction, let alone retreat. I tried to chase after him, but he disappeared after I got into the water. Poor bastard. And that does it for the Arctic. Um, I'll talk about the Manda fight next. I forgot to mention before, but the music that played during the new monster fights is reused from themes actually in the game. So far, the themes have been as follows. Titanosaurus, Gizra's music. Biolanti, Hedera's music. Orga, Baragon, Magero's music. Mando, Varan's music. Space Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla's music. As for the fight, Manda was a fairly crafty opponent. When he realized his one tactic was ineffective, he would immediately change to another one. Manda had quite a few tricks like spitting fire, biting, and most irritating, the most irritating of all, constricting. It doesn't mercilessly drain your life like Gigan's Cutter, but it was by far Manda's strongest attack. One last thing to note that I found pretty cool was that the Etric Gon showed up during the fight to help me out. Manda crushed you with ease, but it was still cool. After I slayed Manda, I played through the Arctic level for health power-ups, and then I was on to Gigan's replacement. When the fight started, I was very confused because there was nothing there. I, I thought this was going to be a, the Titanosaurus fight on Pathos, but then just about that time, it would have been going back to the map, a piranha appeared on screen. But it wasn't there for long. As soon as it appeared, the speakers emitted an ear-splitting screech and not Gigan, flew in and ripped the poor fish to pieces. Well, that's one way to get the player on their toes. That abrupt entrance scared the hell out of me, and I got my, it got my adrenaline rushing, which in retrospect was a good thing, because not Gigan was one of the fastest, most unrelenting opponents in the game. Not Gigan was tough, but my new skills with Anguirus Help me score, even the score. It was still an incredibly intense fight. Not Gigan's attacks consisted of some kind of blood laser he spews from his mouth and a downward splash. Uh, slash. I was expecting some hellish variant of the buzzsaw attack, but thankfully there didn't seem to be one. The howl was invaluable in defeating him. I would have taken more screen caps of the fight, but it really it was really hard to concentrate. After that, there was just one monster left to take down. Space Godzilla. As mentioned earlier, I used Godzilla in their fight. Space Godzilla's fighting technique was rather frustrating, but admittedly a very clever idea. Space Godzilla would use his energy to create two flying crystals, which would reach the ground and become crystal spires. Now, these spires not only block you from reaching Space Godzilla, but it also allowed him to constantly recharge to full energy and blast you with a deadly charged Corona Beam until it broke 
the spires. Space Godzilla would eventually drain his own spires of energy until they shattered. And if you waited for that to happen, you'll probably lose a lot of life. Heat beams actually seem to re-energize the sprites, so you had to physical, use physical attacks. When you finally got close enough to hit Space Godzilla, he was no pushover. When I punched him, he hit me back just as hard. Space Godzilla does everything in his power to knock you back to the left corner of the screen so where he can so he can create more spikes. By the time this was over, I had only had five bars left, but it didn't matter because I didn't need to fight anyone. I needed to run. Here we go again. Ugh. I decided that right then that I really wanted to see this, see the end of this game. As terrifying as these levels could be, I had to beat them to get through. I decided that no matter what happened, no matter what this game showed me, I was going to get to the end and also make sure not to say a damn word while playing a chase level from here on. <sighs> For this chase, I tried out Angiris since his roll attack allowed me to move faster than Godzilla and or Mothra. The chase started off like the first two, except there was a river of blood below the ground. I was beginning to get the hang of it and the extra speed from the roll helped me get an edge on the red monster especially since I didn't have to worry about a power limit that you keep rolling and could keep rolling endlessly. Like the previous levels with water, the ground inevitably reached a stop, so I rolled off into the blood. To my surprise, the hell beast didn't follow me. It just stopped at the edge and grimaced. I guess I can't swim, I thought to myself. So I went under blood and continued moving. There wasn't anything else around, but I knew something. I knew something was up. The, the chase wasn't going to end that easily, could it? Surely something had to show up and... and and sure enough, I heard that bellowing roar sounding slightly different. And the monster was following me in a new aquatic body. I had no idea it was a shapeshifter. After it reappeared, the chase started to get into the difficulty I had expected. Being submerged slowed me down, putting me and the beast at about the same speed. The only thing that would have kept me alive was fast thinking and reflexes. I encountered some bottomless pits which, in which mines are floated up from. I assumed that if you hit one, it would damage you and knock you back. Considering how fast the red monster swims, hitting the mines would be an instant death. So I went through great effort to avoid them. But it wasn't all I had to be wary of. Halfway through the chase, the Hell Beast revealed yet another surprise. A tentacle formed of intestine and tipped with a clawed set of jaws burst from its mouth, trying to pull me in and devour me. Yeah. I only barely avoided the tentacle and the mines, but I could tell the beast was getting desperate. But the chase was nearly over. And about a minute later, I had spotted a bit of ground that served as the exit. I leapt with all the might I could muster without breaking my controller. The beast screamed with rage and jumped out of the blood river. 
in one last attempt to drag me down. But I escaped its grasp this time. I fell back on my bed and took a deep breath, satisfied with another successful escape. Now I was headed for the fifth world. Entropy. And honestly, I'm going to end it right there <laughs> for right now. Oh, man. Yeah, just for right now, I'm just going to, we'll, we'll pick back up on uh, chapter five and then we'll do hopefully five to the end. But these, these, these chapters are huge. I had to scroll a lot and um, for one reason or another, I think it's just because of like the size of the, the images too. They're really, but yeah, no. I had no idea that a Godzilla story could be so intricate. Yeah, they, that's, that's why it's really, people love it. Yeah, this is this is this is one of the this is one of the OG ones. Um, one of the ones you moved think to of. the wiki. I haven't really looked at it much because the few I looked at it at in the beginning just sucked. So I can't say that I blame you for feeling that way. Um, a lot of them are either just mid or bad, uh, but. The the rare ones that are good, they're really good. Um, I will. Sorry. Well, you know, shit like Ben Drown and Squidward's Unalive and other stuff like that. Uh, that th those are pretty popular. Creepy pastas were ones that were created before the wiki existed. Correct, but the wiki just collates them. Hmm. So, oh my fucking god! After, <sighs> yeah, I, I the, hate lost that mostly. Well, the. They're just they're just oversaturated is all. People can't really help themselves. Yeah. The one lost episode things I do like is is when they're like made up of other shows like Happy Happy or like Candle or or, or, or Candle Cove. Mm -hmm. Shit like that. Those two are really good mm -hmm. because I those shows don't exist. Like uh, the Cove one because. That is of an original like thing. It's its own yeah. original thing. I don't count one. It like would that. it would fall. Well, the reason why it would fall under that is because it's still like under that purview of, you know, being under that. Um, it still it still falls under the last episode thing. Yeah, because it has like a production sort of deal. And yeah, it I, I it kind of it is. It falls under that category, but it it, it doesn't it isn't beholden to that category, if that makes sense. Yeah, the other problem Creepypasta Wiki is Mary that that has that is Mary Sue's, because holy hell, there's a lot of them. Oh yeah, there are a lot of characters like that, and a lot of stories that are just mm -hmm. like not not even just good at stuff. And then, like, bad in other ways. They're just good at everything. They're, they're amazing at everything. So. Yeah, I I was told to, like, oh, yeah, uh, Clockwork is a good creep boss, so I decided to read it. And wondered how the fuck she managed to escape. <laughs> I'm yeah. still confused as to how. Because <laughs> narrators say <too>, so. <laughs> It would be physically yeah, impossible. No, no, no. Not if you're a literal. Not if you got plot armor. <laughs> not if you have plot armor. 
The plot armor is nice and thick. Uh, so, so are you saying we're... Plot armor is better than Mithril. If you can survive, <laughs> you survive because the Arbiter of the World said so. Like, that is... <laughs> That is, peak like that. that is peak yeah. power shit. I love it. It's it's ridiculous. God damn. Oh, another thing that kind of annoys me. I mean, there's some that I don't mind, like uh, that this happens to, like Dickie Toby or something like that. But when Slenderman oh, comes geez. in and says, do this. <laughs> just, just that. Just yeah. do this. However, Tiki Toby was actually done pretty well. Anyway, I like cause... stories where they have a version of Slenderman talking because in the oldest stories online, you don't really hear him talking. He doesn't yeah. have a voice. I I'm just saying, like, Slenderman giving no reason to be there. <laughs> just to be there. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant like one of the ones where Slender Man is suddenly a big talker despite not having a mouth. No, 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 no. He, he, in some stories, he, he just goes to Proxy and says, do this, then leaves. <laughs> that, that's it. What? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that makes, that makes no sense. Oh, Jesus, why? However, Tiki Toby did have a reason, like, when Slender Man said, do this, because... Holy fuck, his life was fucked up. <laughs> I'm not sure if you read it. All but... the time. Yeah. Which is why I really like S SCP stories way better better than most creepypastas. Because there's not any problems with that. That are in there. There's not really any Mary Sue problems or anything like that. Mainly because a able to be canon story, it has to be checked. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it has to be vetted. The pasta thing has no canon. Not yeah. really checked all that much. Yeah. And then you see stuff like Sonic.exe be me the thing. Oh, Jesus. No. Yeah. I think that was. I can't, I can't tolerate any more Sonic.exe. I can't do it. <laughs> I think it was like, um, yeah, I think it was the only creepypasta story that was kicked off the platform. You have to be a special sort of something to be kicked off there. Yeah. Oh, Momo, would you like to hear hear something interesting? What? There, there's a small group of people who want Sonic.exe to be an SCP. <laughs> Your mom just goes dead quiet. I mean, yeah, I, I can't. I. <laughs> oh lord! <laughs> it would never make it. No, it wouldn't even make it past the review point. Like if they, they would, it'd be the first fucking <laughs> sense of that shit, and they throw it right back. Tell I me, mean, like, what right the back. fuck are you sending like me? Like that? <laughs> what have I got given? <laughs> like you took that to a commercial co oh no be like, what the fuck did I get here? yeah another thing is you what also is have to get the, the permission too like yeah because Trevor Henderson which surprised me they gave permission for Big Charlie to be an SCP so yeah Big Charlie is technically an SCP If you know what Big yeah. Charlie is, I, I do. I do know about Big Charlie, but yeah, I gotta, I gotta head off. All right, I am like, I gotta have, I am tired, <laughs> so oh, yes. I'm just gonna head off. Let me know when we're reading again. I'm totally oh, yeah. down to finish the story. It'll probably you be have to I... read for red. <laughs> yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, but I think it'll probably be in October before that happens. October? Yeah. Alright, I'm fine with that. That makes sense, though. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's... Any any last stories for the stream? Um... You know, just 
work out and take your vitamins, eat your vegetables, and give us those three little numbers at the back of your parents' card, and <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll be all, we'll be all, everything will be copacetic, everybody. We love you. <laughs> all right. Any, any, Jerry, any last words? Jerry? Oh. Yeah, yeah they're. Well, Me? Yeah, yeah. Any last words? <laughs> oh. Sometimes, no matter how many, uh, how much you take care of your body, you might get cancer anyway. Oh, that's depressing. <laughs> that's 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 so on brand, though, for for them. Yeah, yeah that was good. Last yeah. words, Jerry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're fine. But uh, anyway, D class, if you don't follow and subscribe, I will make Red the new U.S. president. You know, honestly, <laughs> if you saw those pictures of 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 Joe Biden with doing his whole dark Brandon thing, I think he might already be like <laughs> in the Are cabinet you or something like that. Pissed at the right wingers that he's becoming red. I I <laughs> I, I the right wingers will use anything, any reason to disparage. Joe Biden, do you remember that report that Sean Hannity did when back when Barack Obama was president because he put mustard on his hamburger? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he put mustard on his hamburger once, and 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 that's what they they bitch about. It is piss easy to trigger a conservative dipshit. You know what? I've eaten weird shit. I've eaten weirder than that. I have eaten. You probably don't want to know the weirdest thing I've eaten. Well, this dude, a like, frosted well, flake omelet. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't gonna say I necessarily particularly wanted to know one way or the other. I appreciate you telling me because now I can put that feather in my cap. Uh, but I just, it's 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 one of those things where it's like. Like, no matter what, you can't win for losing. No matter what you do, you will always be ridiculed just because you're on that other side. So, yeah. I guess the hellscape. Biden was hoping that he might have an easier time than Obama did to get things through, but then the not Senate with the, thing happened. Yeah, not with the uh, Now, now he's going to have a harder Senate. time than Obama ever did, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Anyways, D class. Uh for in stream for a bit since uh Chu is still alive, I'll be raiding them. Whoa. Well, I'll see you D-class later. See you for another experiment, y'all.